We've been studying in Revelation, and tonight we're going back into Revelation 14. So if you'll turn with me to Revelation 14. Amen. Revelation is an awesome book, isn't it? It's pretty, pretty neat. A lot of type and symbols in Revelation. When you get there, say amen. We're going to verse 9. Amen. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the most awesome name of Jesus we come before you. Lord, we know this book is a serious book in your Bible. Lord God, help me to decrease the way the Holy Spirit can come in and give us instruction. And show us, dear Lord, the deep things and the spiritual things of your Word. Lord God, address each life here personally and each situation personally. We know, dear Lord Jesus, that we are to keep our eyes upon you. Help us all to keep our eyes upon you and love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. I pray that you touch each and every one in here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. You see, verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. There's many, many theologies about <laughs> Revelation. Uh, there's, like I said before, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib raptures that theologians believe. But we see one thing here. It says the patience of the saints and those who can keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus Christ. Those are saints. The Word of God says we will be here. Many people have fallen for the theology of the pre-trib rapture, and it is made popular by the Left Behind series that we're going to be gone before anything happens. But we see things lining up right now in our lives. I mean, in this day and hour, there are things starting to happen that are setting things up for the end time events. Now, no man knows the day or the hour, but Paul tells us to know the season. And here we see that the saints need to have patience. We see the saints need to have faith. So we need to take instruction from the Word of God. Whether you believe in pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, I, I don't have an argument with you. But one thing I do desire that you learn is that we need to build our faith in case we go through some things. Because I believe the church is about to go through much persecution. And overseas, the church is already going through persecution. And they may have thought they'd have been raptured first also, but there are many that's dying, many that's being sawed asunder, many that's being beheaded, and there are some that's being burnt overseas. I've watched it. I've seen it. I've seen the videos. I've seen what they do to Christians. And I'm telling you, there are those here in the United States that would love to do that to Christians here. The hate is rampant. Jesus said in Matthew 24, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. And that love is wax cold right now. People, we're going to have to have patience. Many people will not have patience to wait upon the Lord as He tarries. Many people will get impatient and say, The Lord should have done come back by now. We're going through some things. Well, if we would read the Word and we would understand what it says, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, starting there. Paul instructs us, not to be deceived. He shows us that the Antichrist was set up before. 
the Lord comes back. Even though it's pretty much the popular theory is the opposite. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the Antichrist. And it says that day shall not come until there come a great falling away first, and then that man of perdition set himself up. Now we see there's a great falling away from the fundamental doctrines of the Word of God these days. All you have to do is turn it on the TPN channel and you'll see many doctors that are straying from this right here. There's a great falling away. There's people gathering together, teachers that will tell them what their itching ears desire to hear. There's people that saying, we will not preach about sin. We will not preach about the cross. And we will not preach about the blood because it offends. And you, you have thousands of people that desire to hear that. But there's no salvation without the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There's no salvation without repentance, so you must know that you're a sinner. And there's no power or salvation without the cross of Christ. For it is Christ and Him crucified, which is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So when you have teachers that set themselves up and teach these things, they're preparing the body to be slaughtered by the enemy because the Antichrist comes to set himself up in the temple. He's going to set himself up and be a man of peace. He's going to destroy many with peace, Daniel says. He's coming. So with this in mind, what kind of people should we be? The Lord gives us instructions in the Word of God and gives us character traits that we need to have. If you turn with me to Ezekiel 14, please. Ezekiel 14. You don't have to. When you get there, say Amen. Going to verse 9. You can also go to uh, to back me up on the Lord's yeah. return. You can go to Matthew 24, 27 through 31. And God gives us his timetable of when he is coming back. When Jesus Christ says that after the tribulation of those days, then shall you see the sign of the Son of Man. But I'm not going to go over that tonight. We're going to Ezekiel 14, verse 12. You there say, Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut it off, cut off its food supply, and send famine upon it, and kill its men and their animals, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they could save only themselves by their righteousness, declares the Sovereign Lord. Or if I send wild beasts through that country, and they leave it childless, and it becomes desolate, so that no one can pass through it because of the beast, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved, but the land would be desolate. Verse 17, or if I bring a sword against that country and say, let the sword pass through the land, and I kill its men and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters, they alone would be saved. Verse 19, or if I send a plague into that land and pour out my wrath upon it, through bloodshed, killing its men and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save neither son nor daughter. They would save only themselves by their righteousness. 